a few years back, I created this wallet for a competition. I put a few dollars worth of Bitcoin onto this wallet and I did not write down the password. It was only for demonstration, really. But now those Bitcoins are worth $200 and I would like to get them back. You can maybe use the same technique if you also are in the same position that you lost your password. Pretty much every Bitcoin wallet uses this same principle. So here you can see I have a milli Bitcoin on the first address, milli Bitcoin on the second, and a little bit more on the third address. One milli Bitcoin is something like $50. So all in all, 170, 180 maybe. There's a token on the wallet. I'll not go into that. There are even, there might even be an NFT. I don't know what these tokens are. People have sent tokens to the wallet. But anyway, that's not the scope of this video. So before I start, I'll just briefly explain how Bitcoin wallets, almost all Bitcoin wallets work. So when you create a wallet, you're given 12 random words. You have to write down these words if you ever need to recover your wallet. So it's 12 word passphrase, it's also called a seed. Uh, you should write it on a piece of paper and when your computer or if your computer breaks you can always recreate your wallet and get access to your bitcoin simply by entering these 12 words now there is a second way if you forgot or you lost your 12 words you might be able to use your password if you also have the file that includes the encrypted passphrase and it's always stored on your computer locally uh, for most wallets, it's in a folder called AppData. For some reason, in Microsoft, you have to write a percentage, AppData percentage, and then you can get access to the folder which has your encrypted passphrase. Anyway, so I do have my passphrase encrypted. It's uh, In my case, it's in a file called this, but it doesn't matter. I only need to figure out what my password is. So let's go to, to export keys. They ask for my password. I can enter manually, but there are too many combinations. I will never be able to enter it manually. So I have to have an automated way of trying a lot of passwords until I find the correct one. This technique is called brute force. Uh, the good thing about it is that it might or it will definitely work. The bad news is that it can take you a million years. So depending on how good you are at guessing, I mean, how much you are able to limit the subset of characters or set of characters, how much you are able to point it down, the time might be anywhere from a few minutes to a few years to a few hundreds or millions of years. So anyway, let me tell you what I'm talking about. So let's look at the page source. So when I enter a password, I'm taken here. It checks my input, the password that I input against the encrypted passphrase. It decrypts the passphrase with my input. And if this is a valid passphrase, then it knows that the password is OK. And that's all there is to it. But in order to do the brute force, I need to change this code, which I have already done here. OK, so the code itself is something like 25 lines. It's not very complicated. But I'll just first take, tell you what is what it's written here. So the first character can be any character from A to Z, uppercase, or from A to Z, lowercase. It can be a digit, or it can be one of these special characters. And exactly the same for the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, seventh, or eighth character. In my case, I already know that the password is exactly eight characters. So at least that much I know. And then it creates all different combinations of all these different sets of characters. It loops through. So here you have a nested loop of eight levels. It's quite massive, I can tell you that. 
and then it tries the password candidate against the encrypted passphrase it tries to decrypt it for some reason it usually leaves an error but that's fine that's why you have a try catch so you have the wrong password you get an error in some cases you just happen to get an empty string and in other cases you get a few characters that don't make any sense why the crypto.js library is like that i don't know but it doesn't matter if the length is is more than 20 then i know that it has to be the correct passphrase and the passphrase would be at least 50 characters so this simple test will tell me that the correct password is found uh, what more brute force it might take forever seriously forever so the first character can be any one of these how many? How many? Down there you can see 75 characters. So likewise, the second character can be any of those 75 and so on. So we have 75 times 75 times 75, eight times different combinations, which then happens to be one times 10 to the power of 15. And try and guess what does that mean? Well, one times 10 to the power of 6 would be 1 million. 10 to the power of 12 would be 1 million, 1 million, also called a trillion. So here you have even a thousand times more than that again, so 1,000 trillion combinations. To be correct, that would be 1 quadrillion combinations. Okay, so I did run the script. It turns out that uh, my browser, which I run it in Firefox, is able to do to try 15,000 combinations per second. So if you look at this number, seven, 1 quadrillion divided by 15,000 15, per second times divided by 3,600 seconds per hour divided by 24 hours per day and 365 days a year. It might take up to 2,000 years to try all combinations. Now, <laughs> what does this tell me? Well, obvi the obvious answer is, well, I can't wait that long. I have to find another way. Uh, one way would simply be to make the algorithm more efficient. I'm sure that whatever I did here, it's not a very efficient way. Maybe you don't need to stringify it. If I start looking into that, it will take me time. And my time is, well, I mean, I could get $200, but it's not worth my time to start looking deeper into this. Of course, I run it in the browser. Browser is not the fastest, it's not designed to do brute forcing, of course. I guess it only uses one core. Uh, the CPU, it has something like four or eight cores. So just by that, you could speed up by four or eight times if you're able to run in parallel on many cores. Um, you could use a GPU, how to program a GPU, I don't know. Uh, but that potentially could, I don't know, be 10, 100, 1,000 times faster. But in any case, even if I were able to do the brute force 1,000 times faster, as you see, instead of 2,000 2, years, maybe it would only take two years. Or I could also have a network of several computers to run in parallel and I mean if I had had a thousand computers instead of two thousand years it could be two years if I had a million computers yes I would find it quickly again is it really worth for two hundred dollars now what else can we say which other approach can I make well so I do remember it was exactly eight characters but I also remember I did not use any uppercase letters so now we're talking was not any uppercase letter. So now you see the amount of combin or the, the the set is now only 49. I also happen to remember I used only one special character. It was the plus sign. And now we are down to 36 possible characters. So immediately the brute force becomes a lot easier. 36 to the power of 8. Okay, 2 million million, 2 trillion. What would that mean? 
in terms of years to wait. Mm, still five years, potentially five years. There is something about this though. Uh, this is a worst case scenario. So 5.9 years would be the worst case. You might even find it tomorrow. You might find it next year. Uh, statistically speaking, you're, you expect it to, to find it in half of that time. So you would expect to wait three years again. It doesn't make sense. However, if you do have a big amount, hundreds of thousands, maybe you would run your computer for three years, of course. Or you could just have several computers. Say that you have two computers, then you would simply take this file, your first computer will run an algorithm that, that looks like this. And the second would run. So the first one would then run through ABCD through R. And the second would run from S. And by the way, I didn't, was a bit too lazy, but of course, for every character, you would have to do the same. If you happen to know that you only have lowercase, you only have digits, and you only have the letters, symbol plus. Okay, further ahead, I also remember, because I did not use a random, random, uh, random password generator, I just used my own brain, which typically is a bad idea. But for my case, I just wanted to remember the password, which actually I did remember for a while, but I haven't used it for a few years and that's why I forgot it. So I do remember that the first character was a lowercase. The second one was also lowercase. The third one was a digit. So I think you see where we're heading. Now the brute force will be much, much faster. So the third one was, so I had like two characters. I had two numbers, very easy to remember, or it used to be easy to remember. And then it was something like M or N or something like that. I think it was one of those two. And here was my character. Plus, And then plus two digits again. So, and at, like typically you would not want to make your passwords like this, or maybe you would, because now I'm actually able to get my password back, but an attacker, a hacker, who would happen to also get access to my passphrase, or sorry, to my encrypted passphrase, uh, he could start to look for combinations, something like this. Having said that, so this I put out on GitHub. It has been public and anyone in the world could have done this for the last five years, but no one did. So I think it was a pretty good password in the end. On the other hand, it was only a few dollars worth of Bitcoin until recently. So maybe no one even bothered or no one even knew about this. So anyway, so now you see the number of combinations is really small and it is gonna find my password pretty fast. So let's run the script. So I saved it as export to, I just need to refresh. I will click Control Shift I to get developer tools. And in the console, you can see what is happening now. Okay, so the speed is uh, something like 10,000 per second. It's because I'm running a screen recorder. Without the screen recorder, it would be at the 15. But you can see it's working really fast, or quite fast. It's already past 1%. So in terms of brute force, that's very fast, but we have to wait. I tried to do it in Chrome as well. It works in Chrome, but just a lot slower, at about 5,000 per second. So just keep that in mind. Firefox is faster. So of course, uh, when you are running a script like this, um, you freeze the browser. At least with Firefox, you just click somewhere on the window and it will give you a pop-up here, not a pop-up, but like this drop down. And you can click stop if you want to stop the script. Otherwise it just keeps on going on. It can go on for days if you want or years, doesn't matter. It just keeps going. 
So of course, if, if your case is, uh, let's say you have an Electrum wallet, uh, you forgot your password. Um, like I said before, you have to type in app data with all those uh, percentage marks and all that in order to get the file. Uh, how exactly you would attack it, I, I don't know, but it, it's for sure is possible because your seed is encrypted inside that file. Uh, so the technique would be the same, but uh, you have to you have to really try and remember as much as you can about how your password looks like. There's a tiny narrowing down of the the character set that really speeds up everything. <laughs> okay, I see there's a mistake in how I calculate the percentages. I don't care about that. It's just for my own view, but it's like. Two, four, six, seven, eight, eleven, one, and then it's back at one percent again. But anyway, it doesn't matter. The letters are going the way they should. Now I see now it's on letter D. It goes from A to Z. So it's going in the right way. It is going to find the password soon. So okay. So in the case that you don't have the seed, you don't have the twelve-word pa passphrase or seed, and you don't have the um, that file. Then I'm sorry, you're out of luck. There's no way you can ever get back your bitcoins. So I hate to give you that, but it's just how things work by design. Uh, yeah, there you have it. There's the password. So let's see. Okay, then we can make a paper wallet. And there we have it, the passphrase, the addresses, and so on. Perfect. Uh, now there is one thing that uh, I forgot to tell you, but it's super, super, super important. Uh, if you have the same problem, uh, of course it's not this wallet because no one is using it, it was just for competition. Uh, say you have Electrum, you have your Electrum encrypted file. Don't give that file to a programmer to help you out with this. Because you know what's going to happen? If he's not very trustworthy, uh, he has your file, he gives you the code to brute force, but he might very well brute force it himself faster than you are, and he will get your keys. So either you just have to find a general algorithm that works, but don't give him any hints about how your password looks like. Don't give him your file. You can give him a dummy file, but not a real file. Or you don't need to give him anything at all because he should be able to create a dummy file himself. And the only thing that he should give you is a general algorithm. Uh, the brute force you have to run yourself on your own computer. Okay, that's all. Good luck if you lost your bitcoins. Hopefully you will be able to redeem them. All right, bye bye.